Hello everybody, how are you all doing? Welcome to this week's episode of The Draw Talk. I didn't manage to do one of these last week, but now we are back at it and we're going to be doing some drawing. Now in the past, I've been using these episodes of Draw Talk as an opportunity for me to give you some advice or quickly just bring something up. They can also go alongside the bigger tutorials that I make. And uh, recently I've come up with a lineup of videos that I'm going to be doing. And these videos cover things like drawing facial features, drawing the human head. We're also gonna be covering realistic textures and how you can apply them on your own drawings all the stuff like that and so alongside all them bigger tutorials i'm going to be doing some draw talk episodes where i cover the small details and give you some advice along the way so in this episode i'm going to show you how you can create the basic construction for the human head and then we're going to expand on it in further tutorials does that sound good roll the intro <laughs> Okay, so before we get into this, let me just point out a few things. Firstly, I'm going to be using a normal 2B pencil. You can use whatever you are comfortable with. I see a lot of people sharpening their pencil so it looks like this, which is useful because then you can use the side of the pencil. You can create wider strokes and in some cases be more expressive in your work, but it really comes down to what you find more comfortable. Also worth noting is how you grip your pencil. Some people hold it like this, which makes it easier to work from the shoulder and create longer lines. And then you can also hold it like this, which I do most of the time. This allows you to use the point of the pencil more accurately. And I do a lot of realistic drawing where I'm making a lot of detail and small marks. So this is more suitable for me and I have a lot more experience holding it like this. I like to vary between them both though, depending on what it is I am trying to achieve. I'll probably do a video on holding the pencil at some point, but again, it's whatever you find best. So finally, let's jump straight into this construction of the head. I'm going to begin by drawing the head from a basic front view and also from a side view. In a future video, I'll move on to drawing the head from various angles. By the way, the approach I'm going to be using for drawing the head was a method created by this guy, Andrew Loomis. He has all these different drawing books. This one's titled Drawing the Heads and Hands. It's really useful. I recommend them a lot to people who want to learn how to draw. So we're going to begin by drawing a circle. It might be easier for you to draw from your shoulder and grip your pencil from above, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to try and get it as close to a perfect circle. Also, the better your circle is, the better the head construction will turn out. Now we are creating a front view, so I'm going to simply mark the center point of this circle, and this is going to be the eyebrow line. The whole circle, if we imagine it as some kind of ball, it pretty much acts as the cranium of the head. After we have that centre point, draw a vertical line upwards in the middle and then a horizontal line across. Now I'm going to split each side of this into fades and mark these on. So if you haven't realised yet, we are marking on where the facial features would be. And we are not finished with that yet because we still need to add the bottom of the chin. To do this, we look at the distance of one of these fades and then simply add another one below the circle. So now that we have this, let me walk you through each of these marks. The first one is the hairline. When we draw the head from a three dimensional angle, you'll sometimes see how this might change. Sometimes we mark it in the middle between the top of the head here and then the brow line. And so the brow line is of course the center line here. This is where the eyebrows will sit. And then it's also worth noting that the brow line also indicates the top of the ears. Halfway between these two marks is the level at where the eyes would be placed. This mark here indicates the base of the nose and this is where the bottom of the ear would be. So obviously the ear goes from the bottom of the nose all the way to the top of the eyebrow line. Here is roughly where the mouth would be, however I sometimes separate this section into fades as well and then the top of the fade would be the mouth, then the other two would be the top and bottom lip and finally we have the base of the chin. Okay, so I've just simply marked out where some of the placements for the features would be and now we have our circle but the head isn't just this full circle so we slice off a section either side and this is usually about two thirds the length of the whole circle. You'll get a better idea of this when we draw the head on an angle in a later video. At the bottom of this section, continue these lines to the chin to form the jaw and then we can also draw in the ears between these two points. Okay, so if you are a beginner, the Andrew Loomis method can be quite hard to follow, especially once you have gotten the basic construction and you want to go ahead and add some facial features. In this episode, we are focusing on this construction. In a future video, I'll explore the placements of features more in depth. 
However, I'll quickly go ahead and give you a basic example now. So following the markings that we have created, I normally start by drawing in this point in the centre, between the eyes and just above the nose. This is also known as the keystone, and this can seem to angle inwards into the face before the nose pushes outwards. But we would draw that in and then from that bring the nose down to the point that we marked on. So for the mouth, we would draw that in. We could draw in the eyebrows as well, on the correct line. These usually go to the side of the face and it can sometimes be effective to bring them down a bit round the eye so it can point out the eye socket. And then usually from around the point of the ear, we create a line going to the chin to indicate a cheekbone. Finally we can finish by drawing in the eyes on the centre of this line. So now things are all coming together and when you want to draw the hair, remember that it sits around the circle and not directly on it. Now from this construction we can take it further with more details, I'll give you a quick example but we will talk more about each of the features in separate videos so don't worry if this looks a bit too complicated. So now let's take a look at constructing it from a side view. We have already drawn the front view so now we can just duplicate these marks that we've made across and do the same again. So like always start with the basic circle. We mark on the exact same marks as we did last time and this isn't a front view but we still need to locate the features that we will end up seeing from the side. So from the front view I could just lightly draw these lines across and mark them all on again. Now this is where we need to locate the side plane. So just like we did when we sliced off a section off either side of the circle before, we do that here. Except this time, as it's a side view, we would just see the side plane as a flat circle. And we would only see one side. But make sure the centre point of this circle is directly in the middle of that brow line. Also for the chin, I'm going to bring this line across where we marked it on last time. But when this is done on a side view, as we bring this line down from the brow line, it might bend inwards to appear more like the form of a head, and then we can just mark on the chin. From here you might be wondering how do we add the jaw, and so normally a jaw would come up to around this line of the side plane from the chin, sometimes it can just be behind this point, more underneath the ear. Obviously it doesn't travel all the way around the head because that is where we would see the neck. So now we have an idea of where everything needs to go and now I'm going to go ahead and draw in the side of the face. But there are things that we need to understand and realise regarding the forms of the head and how it isn't just this flat surface. For example, when I mentioned that the keystone area can push inwards from the brows to the tip of the nose, it would basically look something like this. And then we would have the nose coming outwards and possibly angling upwards at the base. The lips would also have a form to them as well. Also the chin might extend out a little bit giving shape to that jaw. The eyebrow would go where it usually does on the eyebrow line. And then we could also mark on the eye socket. The eye would probably sit further back in the eye socket. Then we have the ear which again would be between the brow line and the base of the nose. And from different angles the ear usually sits in this right bottom quarter of the side plane. So once again with this side view, I'll show you a quick example of how you can build on top of this construction. Creating the details like the cheekbone and the hair, it might take a bit of practicing and stuff to understand the placement of features, but this construction is a useful starting point. And there we have it, we have the basic construction for the head on a front view and a side view. In the next tutorial, I'll be showing you how to draw the head from different angles using the same method. In the meantime, if you are eager to carry on practicing drawing the head, then there are loads of videos on the subject around YouTube. And you could also purchase Andrew Loomis's book. This video could also be like some kind of guide to go along with that. So that's it for today. I look forward to creating some more tutorials soon. And I also am working on a skin texture tutorial. I know that a lot of you have been wanting me to do one of them, so it's coming. Um, all these tutorials and videos that I'm doing will flow into each other and hopefully be useful for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. It really helps me out. Other than that, have yourself a great day. I'll see you in the next one.